Good morning. Yeah, my name is Jennifer Bonert, and I'm from the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado. And today I'm going to be talking about a project that we worked on, taking a look at the ArcGIS Pro EBK regression prediction tool um, in order to downscale climate simulations. I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors on this paper, Mari Tai and Olga Vahelmi. So global climate models or general circulation models are mathematical equations that characterize how earth and, or how energy and materials are transferred through the climate system. They're made up of a number of grid cells and all these grid cells describe the materials um, within them and how energy moves through them. GCM, a global a climate a model resolution tend to be rather coarse. Right now, we're talking about 100 kilometer in um, resolution. Back 30 years ago, when we were first running these models, we we're talking about 500 kilometers. So we've come a long way. However, our 100 kilometer resolution is not really adequate for addressing interdisciplinary questions, which are of interest to stakeholders. So the information needs to be at a much finer resolution for doing local and regional scale analysis, taking a look at vulnerability, impacts, and adaptation. One way that we can go from this large scale um, resolution to a finer resolution is through a technique called statistical downscaling. This is a procedure where we take information known at large scales and we make, it predict we make predictions at local scales. The image on the right shows you the black dots are the grid centroids from the GCM that's at a hundred kilometer resolution. Um, the gray dots are local weather station locations. And then that blue surface is an interpolation from the weather stations at a four kilometers. So really we're trying to go from that hundred kilometer resolution down to that blue surface of four kilometers. With ArcGIS Pro, um, they have a new tool called the EBK regression prediction tool. This particular tool takes EBK interpolation methods and explanatory variables in order to interpolate your surface. So it combines Kriging with regression analysis in order to predict, um, in order to predict information. And this, by combining these two together, we actually get more accurate predictions than just using regression or Kriging alone. So in this project, uh, we took five different locations within the continental US um, each of those locations, the domain was 500 kilometers by 500 kilometers. And we took a variety of different um, topographic characteristics. So we have um, a few places which are in the plains. We have um, one of our locations in the Southwest desert. We have mountainous locations, uh, locations along the Pacific Northwest, as well as different urbanization areas within those different domains. The workflow that we went through is our input data um, was a CCSM, so NCAR ran a model um, for the fifth assessment report, uh, the community climate system model. So we took this data, which you can also get access to from gisclimatechange.ucar.edu as a point shape file. We took the historical run for air temperature. We wanted to do a 30 year uh, climatology instead of just taking one year. So we took the years 1971 to 2000 we computed a 30 year climatology for the months of January, April, July, and October. We then took that data and we ran it through um, the EBK regression prediction tool a number of times. And we changed up these explanatory variables that we were looking at. We did different combinations of these explanatory variables. The explanatory variables that we looked at were elevation, slope, distance to water, we computed from aspect, eastness and northness, we did distance to urban, and we did station um, temperature information. That temperature information from the stations, we also were able to get from the Living Atlas. Um, we were able to grab that from the Global Historical Climatological Network data set. Um, and we took that station data. So through running this tool a number of times with different combinations of those explanatory variables, we then generated a number of output, which were 30 year average mean temperature data at four kilometers. So our whole process went from those large dots represent that CCSM model grid data, which is at hundred kilometers. And then underneath that is that surface data that we generated at a four kilometer resolution. So now I wanna go through a few of our results. So here's an example of the Boulder domain. 
So within Boulder, around the middle of that is the front range area of Boulder. So we've got Boulder, Denver, Fort Collins. Towards the west is our high peaked mountain areas and towards the east is our plains. When we ran this particular model for January, we found that the best fit model, the best fit was using stations and elevation. When we computed some statistics um, based on our control data set, we found that our mean absolute error was about 1.3 degrees and our, mean, uh, our root mean square error is about 1.8 degrees. Taking a look at some of the other models that did very well, um, they all included station information, but then some of them also used uh, distance to crops, distance to urban, distance to water. I said that we computed this against a control. So the control data set that we use is actually a four kilometer statistically downscale data set. The input was CCSM and it was generated at NCAR by Doug Nitschka and Tim Hoar. They computed this four kilometer statistically downscale data set um, and they used the PRISM data set um, as, um, as the input for that downscaling. So when we take a look at the difference between these two, the EBK regression tool did pretty well at picking up some of these features within, um, within this domain, comparing it to this um, statistically downscale data set. We then also took a look at how did the EBK regression tool do compared to the PRISM data set and compared to um, the statistically downscale data set for the months of January and July. The green bars here are our error bars. They really are the bars. Um, one point is the PRISM, temperature and one point is the CCSM um, statistically downscaled temperature and the dots are the output from the EBK regression tool. So you can see that the EBK regression tool did come up with values that fall within that range of, um, of error. Also the lighter blue shows the higher elevation areas and the lower blue shows the lower elevation areas. Another domain that we worked on is the Phoenix area. And this was an interesting area because we had Phoenix, we have the desert, we also have um, flag stuff, so some of the higher elevations. So it was a very complex terrain. And in this case, we're looking at July here. Um, the best fit model for this um, example uses station elevations and eastness. Again, the mean absolute error was 1.5 degrees and the RMS error is about two degrees. When we compare it to our statistically downscaled data set, again, it did a, it did a fairly good job at finding those, um, those features in the desert and those high elevation areas. And then when we ran the same type of plotting, our error bars are much smaller here. Um, PRISM and our downscale data was much, much closer. And uh, the EBK regression tool um, fell within that particular margin of error. We then also wanted to take a look at the impact of output resolution. Of course, everybody wants data at 30 meters. However, we wanted to take a look at when, when does that resolution really um, stop creating new information? So we did some analysis and we took again that, um, that 100 kilometer output data and we ran it to go as low as, um, as about 90 meters. And we found in this analysis that at about two kilometers, we were not generating any new information. We were simply regridding the existing information. So keeping that in mind in terms of, yes, you can generate data at a very fine resolution. However, um, there is gonna be a point when you're not adding any new information, you're simply regridding your existing information. So in summary, by taking a look at um, our analysis over our different domains and our different um, error scores, we found that the inclusion of that station data was critical for mean temperature downscaling. Also other covariates were also really important, but it depended on the location and the seasonality. Elevation, land cover, distance to urban, distance to water and aspect are all important um, covariates. Keep in mind and to add, but you have to think about where are you doing this and what is the seasonality that you're trying to downscale in order to figure out what would be the best ones that would add information to your downscaling technique. The chart below shows you the different seasons that we have and the different domains. And in brown are the, um, are the best uh, models, are the best covariates that we added to the models. And the peach areas are the second best that we added to the model. So you can really see stations was critical throughout all and elevation was another key uh, covariate to add. 
So with that, um, there's my email address, as well as any of this data, the CCSM data or the downscaling data can be accessed through gisclimatechange.ucar.edu. Thank you.